use the hijab 10 discount code for 10 percent discount on a wide range of products including premium ethiopian black seed products assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the mh podcast this is the 10th episode and i'm joined with two very very special guests to the far right we have dili hussein the chief is it vice president or is it the chief editor? <laughs> These are big titles, deputy editor. Oh, deputy right. editor of Five Pillars. And in the middle is the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> the youth dawah king. He's standing behind the camera. <laughs> Zisha. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Dawa, how are you? Yeah, Both. Yes, I'm actually really happy. You Alhamdulillah. You okay? Sorry, I, think, I, think, I think this is our first video in maybe... Maybe a year. Really? Yeah, I think no, I think we do a lot of videos. I'm sure. Don't talk over me when I'm speaking. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's good. I'm really I'm, I'm actually really happy to be because I haven't seen Diddy. Last time I saw you I was It's been a while. I Eventually, dropped the I dropped the custom off. Yeah, and then and gave me nice sweet hands over some really nice discussion, heart to heart. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Last time I saw you was at the park. Yes, that's right. So we'll and just them. to clarify, when you said far right, it's not telling of where yeah, I was going to political spectrum. That's what I was, I was <laughs> But we are going to be speaking about politics, yeah. and we are going to be speaking about the political spectrum. We are indeed. So let's dive straight into the discussion, Lily. And um, obviously, there's a lot of controversy in Muslim Dawah circles now, um, particularly because of this this question of activism. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that in Muslim circles. Uh, the UK approach is a little bit different to the US approach. Yeah. Can you outline what you see as the main differences between the two? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Basically, well, this is such a vast topic, right? But it goes without say, and all the du'at and Islamic activists who have been in the scene since the 90s, even 80s, know that the UK is the hub of Islamic activism and Dao. So you're now you're going to go into patriotism? No, 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 it's not. The, <laughs> as, the, 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 the least we want is going to Asabiya over, over, over Dawa, yeah? But the point here is the UK has always been the hub and the central point of various Islamic movements and groups. Right. And there's various reasons as to why the activism and the Dao, and by the way, the reason why I use the two together, is because I don't, I think in, from an Islamic standpoint, these two are interchangeable. Mm. Dawa is activism, activism is Dawa. I think they're, they're intertwined. And the reason why that is, is because the community, the Muslim communities in the UK are more established. They've been here much longer and their relationship with the establishment is uh, f more well thought out. You understand? Whereas in the US and North America, broadly speaking, it's a newer diaspora community, with exception to the African-American Muslims, who were the first Muslims from the times of slavery. And in the last 10, 15, 20 years, there's been various challenges, various Whilst we've got wars, oppression and occupation in the Muslim world, in the West we've got things like uh, counter extremism violence laws, CVE laws, Islamophobia, uh, a massive well-funded reformist agenda to change aspects of normative Islam, and a huge push to normalise pro-LGBT values and lifestyles within the Muslim communities. Right? And here you find of late at least that there is a distinct difference between how Muslim du'at and activists and groups in the UK have dealt with these challenges and how it's been dealt with in North America. Muslim, Muslims, I mean UK dot. Muslims, yeah, UK yeah, dot. Yeah. All right, right. So because you're going to say they're Muslim and these ones are not Muslim. No, no, they're, not, they're Muslims. <laughs> well. things, things haven't got that bad yet. <laughs> they haven't got that bad yet. Right. But, but just to just wrap up on this point here, mm. is that the challenges are pretty much the same. They might be at different levels. And mm. whilst we're not, we're not making sweeping generalizations, there's glaringly obvious trends in which the way the Brits have dealt with these similar issues and the way the Americans have. And we can touch upon this later on, inshallah. Before we do that, um, speaking to really, you can call yourself an activist uh, after the kind of work you've done with the far right, mm -hmm. yes. especially in the day of freedom, March mm -hmm. of Freedom. Uh, do you remember that yeah, day? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we saw how you got punched up. Like a little boy. <laughs> you know, while I was chased to the other side. <laughs> You fighting for my life <laughs> and while, while, while he was using pictures of police surrounding you on your whatsapp profile yeah. which had, uh, you know um, yeah. well you remember the time when you ran away right? <laughs> <laughs> when i was dealing with all the, the big boys yeah and that's why i train my legs uh, <laughs> so yeah. so what, we, what what some of the challenges you've you've dealt with yeah in, in uk activism yeah so ba well with me it's obviously it's been like the absolute far right uh, and yeah. also like non-muslims like Majin Nawaz as well um, which I've <laughs> called in you know let's we need to make that clear um, and yeah I did you know you know I, I personally I didn't I didn't believe that I was the right person to do it but I saw no one else doing it 
Yeah. And I felt very like I was I was looking and seeing like the Britain Britain first picking on Muslims mm. who are walking like miskin like they, they don't know much and being picked on and bullied and you seeing Tommy Robinson insulting the Prophet over and over again, it just really like infuriated me, you know? And that's why I know like I think if I'm mistaken, like you had some criticism of me doing that bit. Like I was it was coming from a good place. You get what I'm trying feedback, to say? Brotherly yeah, brotherly brotherly feedback, feedback, exactly. Yeah. So with me it was like I explained, I said, brotherly, like this is how I feel, you know. Mm. When I'm seeing this happen in front of my eyes and not many people are doing anything. I'm not saying, and there's people more qualified to doing, but me, I'm a more hands-on guy. Yeah, like I'm, I'm just like that. You get? It? I'm just like I don't care. And it's six months, I was tracking Tommy Robinson. That I was, I was tracking where his flights are coming. I was in Luton Airport waiting for him once, and he, he ended up going to I think Stansted or something. So I wanted them to feel the, the fear in their heart. Mm. I want, I wanted them to know that that we're on their case, you know. And I dealt with them, and you know, like there's lessons that I've learned through it, uh, alhamdulillah. But all in all, inshallah, it's it's. It broadened the spectrum in the context of there was a lot of people at the far right would come and be like, okay, you know what, you change your mind about this or etc. You know, so it was good, but mm. yeah, like you know, I did, and I'm the, I do, like I don't have absolute regrets, but there's things I could have done better, things I could have learned, mm. but all in all, inshallah, it, it was a benefit, and we all accept it. I mean, I think it's important to also add that you know, activism is such a broad spectrum. There's so yeah. many things. People think oh, it's just a protest. It's not. Mm. It's confronting Islamophobes and anti-Muslim bigots. It's lobbying, whether it's MPs or think tanks. It's dealing with even the opponents of Islam and Muslims on a grassroots level to those in the echelons of power. Mm. Remember, you, you, remember you said to me, Henry Jackson's no one, Douglas is no mm. one. And I said, but hijab, their followers and their views might not be many, but they're the ones that are getting the laws through government. Mm. Mm. So Muslims in different aspects of their professions, they are dealing and doing activism, whether knowingly or unknowingly, with different parts of our many challenges. Yeah, It's not just protests. There's so many things. There's lobbying, there's, there's court cases, what the... Our enemies now call lawfare. The Muslims are now engaged in lawfare, mm. right? So activism is such a broad spectrum and everyone's got a part to play in it. You guys have a huge role to play in it in the realm of YouTube and online. No one, you're right, no one else is really doing it. If there wasn't a hijab and Ali, although I've, I've never said this on camera before, but if you two and others weren't there, who would keep the likes of, mm. you know, I don't want to mention any names, in check? We're not. And how are you guys going to keep the likes of Douglas Murray and the Institute of Strategic Dialogue and these kind of people in check? So we need everyone in every level to be dealing with definitely, this. Definitely. I do feel like, you know, there are some people who have never responded to me. Like uh, I've, I've done a video on Ben Shapiro, for example. Yeah. But I know that they're acutely aware of those videos. Yeah. And I know many of them are not speaking about Islam because they know that it would be... Yeah. Um, a perfect opportunity for people like me to just be on their case mm. yeah. and uh, it's the same thing with you Ali I know that yeah. there are many people that would be mm. coming out of the woodworks now mm. if we didn't use what you could mm. call a confrontational mm. approach mm -hmm. but talking about different approaches I, I think the confrontational approach is something we have used mm. and we feel like it's been successful I want to mention one thing that on a law level on a legislation level that was quite big in the news which is last year 2019 with the RSE bill yes. and the protests that were taking place in, in Birmingham. Namely and elsewhere in the North and Midlands, but namely Birmingham. Yeah. How would you gauge the success of these Muslim protests outside of schools to try and stop um, sex education and or um, LGBT learning going on, which halted uh, uh, learning uh, or these lessons in particular for a very long time and mm prompted a national conversation which you actually part of weren't you yeah i was i was indeed um the with pierce morgan it was yes mm. the oh, yeah. Yeah, so so the relationship assessment education <laughs> bill was passed last march yeah. and it came into effect this month so that means in in primary and secondary schools in england um it is compulsory now or a responsibility for them to now teach a uh, same-sex relationship and, and and curriculums that basically kind of normalize these things I, mm. I mean my brother yusuf patel who, who's in, involved in all I this i think i'm going to talk to him he's going to contact me i'm going to do a po not podcast but an interview with him because yeah. he i did one with a christian guy mm. and he said there was some things that are not actually yeah, yeah, true yeah, yeah, yeah. so he got in contact yeah. me and you can keep an eye for that so so, so so what basically happens yeah. that um around a couple of hundred muslim parents uh in birmingham mm. when they got a whiff of what's being taught Without consultation, yes, um, they withdrew their children from going to school and they protested peacefully within the framework of the law outside the school, basically saying that you cannot be teaching our children these kind of things, that you know, uh, Imran can come into school and identify as Amina, and Amina can come to school and identify as Abdullah, these things are not going to happen, um, that you can absolutely be gay or Muslim, meaning they're teaching these things not from a morally neutral point of view. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. And there's this kind of a straw man where people say, oh well, we teach religious studies, religious studies is taught from a morally neutral point of view, That's right. whereas this was not. 
But the, po- mm. the greater point here is that Muslim parents deemed it uh, worrying and alarming enough to protest um, uh, peacefully and withdraw their children. And that sparked a national discussion from, mm-hmm. from the government to, uh, you know, the main TV shows and yeah, news yeah. channels and everything. And they were labelled homophobic, fundamentalist, extremist, intolerant, but that did not stop them. And do you know what else though, I want to add, I was just looking at some of those videos and they're, they're freely available on the internet mm-hmm. now, like um, on Sky News, a yeah. uh, YouTube channel. I was looking at the comments underneath and actually there was a lot of people um, in support of Muslims oh, yeah. from the Christian community well, like, um, and know, from other communities you know, Jewish, so, Jewish there was a rabbi yeah, traveling yeah, over, there. Yeah. over there so, so after my showdown from, with, with Piers Morgan I had overwhelming support which you can see online yes you can yeah, on GMB and, and by the way they cut six minutes from that they didn't upload the full thing right. but um, the overwhelming support from Christians especially who said our leaders no longer have a back, my backbone Mm. Right. We are a spineless community. Mm. Many Christians conveyed this to me that we have already succumbed to this centuries ago. Right. You understand? Whereas you guys are representing, you're making us proud, our Abrahamic brethren, etc. You know, there was a lot of support from the Jewish yeah, communities. I think that was one of the most uh, commented uh, yeah, yeah. things. So, so, so yeah. you know, but the point to take away from this is that the parents were resilient. Yeah, they did not buckle under pressure. They mm. were labelled Was everything. it just the parents or was it the ulama as well? No, no, oh yeah, of course. So the, they had a lot of scholarly support. Alhamdulillah, there was 120 ulama who signed a, a signed statement, which you can see in Five Pillars, and, and it's been published elsewhere, where they, where they criticised the RAC bill from a legal and a moral point of view. Um, and just to add to that, seven years ago, when the same-sex marriage bill went through in 2013, 500 ulama, Sunni and even Shi, right? Salafi, Brelvi, Diobandi, Ikhwani, you name it, all groups. 500 scholars issued a statement saying that we are against the same-sex marriage bill. The bill still went through, but a statement and a stance and a precedent was set Mm. that this is not something that we're willing to uh, accept wholeheartedly Mm. and you're not going to get the full support of the community, especially not from the religious figures. And when you compare that now to the US, where their freedom of speech laws are far more laxed. Exactly. You can get away with saying a lot more yeah, and keep, doing a lot more. We went to a campus, Christian shouting, you're going hell. Okay, I've never seen yeah. that in my life. Why and, is that? Can you imagine? You're going to the fire. And, you're going to... Okay. Well, that would be good. If it's that, what's the problem? Yeah, and there's a far stronger yeah. Christian conservative constituency in the US. Mm. So sometimes when we see things in the US, Right, I think also this ajib. We've got tighter freedom of expression laws here and free speech laws. Our hate speech laws are very, very tight. In America, you can get away with saying a lot, as well as packing guns as well. Let's remember, this is a cowboy country. Mm. The Muslims could strategically, if they want to do, could look at alternative alliances in terms of fulfilling single issue stuff like the RSC bill and you know LGBT issues. But as we're going to discuss later on, this whole kind of blind allegiance to the left, the progressive left. Uh, is dangerous and we are already starting to see the rotten fruits of it. And talking about this, let's talk about that. Um, I think case study one we should talk about um, is a prominent figure in America called Linda Sarsour, yes. who I think is a Palestinian Same. nationalist or she at least has Palestinian allegiances, which of course is a very good thing. She yeah. believes in uh, rights for the Palestinians, etc. But what I've understood from her from her rhetoric really is that she's totally subsumed into this ideology of the left, totally absorbed into it, and categorically, almost unreservedly, right, um, talks about you know um, give LGBT rights. But not only that, it seems like, and this needs to be corrected and asked. I mean, this is a point of uh, question here. Mm. Is she morally in favor of this behavior? In other words, does she deem it as morally acceptable? This is a question I still don't know the answer to. to for same-sex behavior between two people. And also on abortion. And what I find really, to be honest with you, disturbing is that the acquiescence of the, the clerics in America to this, and even to some degree, the support yeah. of some of these clerics. On what basis is that um, justifiable in Islam on what basis is this okay mm. and what benefit is this giving us as the Muslim community in, in the US Ali do you want to touch upon that before I lay some smackdowns I think you should go with the smackdown man <laughs> so look for those of you who don't know who uh, Sister Linda Sarsour is she's an American Palestinian activist from uh, Brooklyn from New York very That's prominent came into huge prominence I think a couple of years ago in the Million Women's March right. outside Washington DC went you know against Trump and some of the comments he made against women etc Um, And there's various interviews and statements of hers where she's, uh, you know, conveyed 
clear un-Islamic positions. I mean, kufri. I mean, this is without a shadow of a doubt. Right? We're not calling her a kafir. I was saying that the statements she has made is without a shadow of a doubt goes beyond the consensus. Which, which of ones? Like, for example, yeah, like what? Uh, like, uh, so, so, for my I'll be, I'll be honest, I don't know. Okay, I so, don't really okay, know so, her. So, right. so you guys tell me about her. I don't know. Her. Okay, so from my understanding, I believe she is of the position of unrestricted right of women to abort as and when they wish. All right. Let me read out exactly what she says. Yeah. Um, yes. In minute ten. Okay, make sure it's... Uh, M- M- it. Minute 10, second 5, right, in her interview, when she was actually with Yasser Qadi and Mehdi Hassan. Yeah. And she says, gay rights and Islamic rights are part of the same struggle. She agreed to this okay. point. So, this I want to understand from her. Does she mean to say that she believes that gay rights or that homosexual behavior on a fundamental level is, uh, is okay? Um, I think what she's saying here, is, and this is a very common strand of thinking within the left, the progressive left, is intersectionality and it, or intersectional right. politics, which is basically there are certain oppressed groups and discriminated groups in society. So it's usually class. Mm. Obviously, its roots is it within Marxism. So it's class, gender, sexuality. Yeah. Now race. To say that all these kind of different groups are all within part of a greater struggle against the establishment uh, and therefore... Islamic rights or that the rights of the Muslim community is on par with the LGBT rights because we're both discriminated communities. So it makes from a Maslaha point of view strategically wise to ally with the LGBT and even Black Lives Matter and others, right? Because we are all discriminated minorities. Can I just come in on this? Because I've actually written a book on intersectionality. Yeah. It's called Fifth Wave Feminism. MashaAllah. That's right. And um, this book is available. <laughs> for you to buy <laughs> and actually what this book was is a collection of mm. maybe five or six essays that I'd done when I was in it, the gender studies yeah. uh, department and so on mm. and they all got distinctions actually That's high level distinctions <laughs> so no one said who, who cares <laughs> <laughs> no no just in case anyone says yeah, what, do, what, do yeah. we, what do we know yeah, we true, were talking true, about true, intersectional true, stuff true, so true. Um, anyway look this, this term was I think first introduced by Kimberly Crenshaw yes. right in maybe the 80s or the 90s right and like you've just said so women, women uh, in feminism, it doesn't have to be women because obviously trans yes. theory comes into mm, it yeah. and this is part of the, the, the wider kind of queer theory, mm. have different identifiers. Yes. So it's not just not, she's not just a woman, she's a woman, she's a black woman, no. she's, yeah. you know, um, working she could class work in class. Mm. So class, get, class gets class, in there. Yeah. Yes. The problem here that I have with this is that the hierarchization of these identifiers is usually left to Western um, people. Yeah. Mm. So in other words, why is it that womanhood, number one, yeah. is more important mm-hmm. than, for example, let's say for the sake of argument, tribe. Yeah. Because if you go to Africa, right, a woman's tribe might be more important to her than her quote-unquote gender. Obviously, yeah. the word gender is extremely fluid very, in, these, very in these discourses, yeah. right? And the same thing might be said with religion, mm-hmm. right? But what I'm arguing is, if we have a community of women yeah. who may... I'm not saying will or do, right? May identify firstly as being religious and then after that as anything else. So mm-hmm. the hierarchization is left to her, right? From an intersectional perspective, and this mm-hmm. is the argument I make in the book, right? Mm-hmm. From an intersectional perspective, it's not that Islam should be subordinate in that sense to intersectional feminist thought. Mm-hmm. It's in fact intersectional feminist thought which has to take on board mm. the full nature of the Islamic character of mm, such absolutely. person. Not like one shoe fits all. No, what I'm saying is this, is that if the inter- we can use the intersectional, in, if the intersectionalist approach is used with a community like the Muslim community, for example, and they decide to hierarchize their own mm. identifiers such that religion mm. becomes prioritized, mm. which they should be if, if, of course, autonomy is afforded to them, and mm. from a feminist perspective, that should be the case. Mm. If they, um, if they prioritize their religious character, then that would suggest, that at least, that um, Islam, or let's say the religious character, whatever it may be that they believe in, even conservative Islam, even ideas, by the way, which might be, which might be um, patriarchal in second wave senses. Because mm. remember, this whole intersectional thing is moving on to third wave feminism yeah, now. Possibly. It's no longer second wave. You know, it's no longer the patriarchal societies. We've gone way deeper into mm. the, the discourse than that. So what, what I'm saying is, really, if we were to use an intersectional, uh, intersectional approach, on an intellectual level, what we can actually establish is women uh, who are Muslim or people that are Muslim, it doesn't have to be women necessarily, mm. because, of course, gender is not necessarily confined to womenness or femininity, mm. if at all, uh, to anything like that, if, if, if they exist in, on this, on this uh, paradigm. Um, once again, if they, if they identify firstly as Muslim, that should be 
the thing. But you, so, so why don't we argue using the intersectionist approach that we should be, you should allow us. Like, for example... But epistemologically, they can't allow that. You know this. No, no, but here's what I'm saying. Look, there has been a bias in favour of what, what we call Western or colonial feminism, yeah. right? White women... Or even privileged women mm. that are not white. Exactly. Right? The first one, is privileged. Yeah. Just like me and you are privileged, yeah. right? On this discourse. Yeah. And why can they call the shots? Yeah. Like, for example, if we really did a referendum on the Muslim community, how much do you, percent do you think will agree with her stances on LGBT? How representative is she really of the Muslim community? She, her stances are basically not representative of, Islam, of the Muslim community in the US or the UK or any part of the West. So, so, let's, just, so let's go over some of these positions. So, yeah. so, so, so her position on abortion. Right? Yes. So she has a, um, a position on obviously same-sex relationships, right? Yes. So, 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 and from my understanding, there's also some concern with regards to her views on Muslim women having non-Muslim husbands and partners, right? Really? Yeah. So, 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 so there's a plethora of issues pertaining to uh, Linda's uh, positions, and and we shouldn't be surprised. And 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 for the last five ten minutes, where uh, Hijab spoke very academically, and you know, if you got a bit lost, what we're essentially saying here is that Linda has subscribed to a framework of activism. Uh, and, and an ideological basis which is un-Islamic, let's be frank about mm -hmm. it, you right? And its roots is within Marxism, and Marx had no space for religion. Mm. Religion was a, an oppressive factor on society, mm. do you understand? Against the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, religion was just a, an opium, you know, yeah? So in that case, we have to understand that Linda has subscribed, and many others by the way, and even in the UK we have Mayor Sadiq Khan, we have Salma Yaqub, who's, who's far less prominent, but we have Similar individuals, but just not as prominent as Linda, who's mm. made huge waves. And this position which she espouses are clearly un Islamic. And mm. she carries on trying to justify it. And if she gets the support from ulama and institutes mm. who come across as traditional and mainstream and normative, mm. this is a very, very dangerous thing which we need to And address. this is the problem. And, and, and that has happened with like uh, Yasser Qadi called, I don't know what was the actual word used, but praising her. Um, so if, and Let's not get into the Asakadi issue, but if he is someone that people seem an American Muslim, an authority, if he's praising her, then what, what do we do from that moment onwards? I just, don't understand. Yeah, this, just, this, just, this, this is a point of tension because I had this conversation with Yasser Qadi face to face. Can I just say something in defense yeah. of Yasser Qadi? Yeah? Yeah. So, so Yasser Qadi, when, when Linda came down for men's national anti-Islamophobia conference kind of thing, right? There was this kind of very open discussion between Yasser Qadi and Linda Sarsour because a lot of Muslims in the UK raised concerns that, to men. Is that public? Yes, you can see it. It should be on men's mm. YouTube channel. Yeah, really? um, and and Yasser put a bit of heat on her. He pressured her a little bit on, on pressed on some of her positions. Mm. She got uh, you know a, a bit on the back foot because it wasn't like Mehdi Hassan who's on her yes. side, right? This is more of a kind of neutral oh, Muslimic platform. That. Yeah, mm. so it's there. And uh, so in Yasser Qadi's defense, he did at times has pushed her on her positions, but they have a muscle, her calculus, and that is mm. why would we call out Linda Sarsour? And Dalia Mujahid and others, right? Mm. Who's another individual? Yeah. Um, why would we call them out when number one, the far right, the right wing, the kuffar, the disbelievers, and those who are actual open enemies of Islam and Muslims are attacking these very same people, and they have the same justification for Ilhan mm. Omar, etc., and Rashid al Talib. But the point is, where do we draw the line? Well, well I was just about to say that. Where do we draw the mm. line? Where do we draw the line? That, that's that's the question that I, need. I think no, today's what, topic. It's the right wing is not just it's not just open enemies of Islam. The right? left wing are also. No, no, no. What I'm saying exactly. is that not all of them are. are Enemies of Islam, and likewise, people on the left are sometimes enemies of Islam. Basically, it's no, no, not they, overtly they are. sometimes no, no, basically, wolves in sheep's. Uh, which clothing. one is which one do you, okay? Let's be honest. Which yeah. one do you think is worse, the far right or the far left? It's very difficult it's very to make. No, but one second. I believe the far right, not being like general here, mm. want to you know, kill the body in the context, and the far left looks like they want to kill the soul. Because if we're talking yes. about the LGBTQ, the far right, like, get out of my country, I don't want you here, I want you dead. Yes. The LGBTQ, the far left, what they're doing is they're not coming, they say, no, we don't want to kill you, we love you. But internally, they're destroying you. Yaki, to us as Muslims, is our body more important than the soul? So I believe the far left are a greater danger than the far right. No, I think that's interesting. What you're saying is that it's, it's, the, it, yeah. the, the, the rhetoric of the far right yes. is, is more interested in removing of physical bodies, immigration, I, and I prefer, I prefer, and so I prefer an enemy. And, that the, and is, the left is, yeah. is more theological Theo or values, ideological exactly. values. Yes. And, and then as human beings, we live in a materialistic world where everything's mm. aesthetic. So when we see someone saying we love you, wow, you, mm. you love me? Okay. And then our guards drop down. Now, when we go to the far right, when I see the far right and I was in a confrontation, I know what they're about. I know what I expect and I know what I'm going to give. Yeah. yeah. So with the far left, hey, I love you. And you feel a bit like, 
Okay, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe a bit, I think the question is where do we draw the line and wh where do you think our American Muslim yeah. brothers and sisters are making a mistake? Hijab, before we go into the specifics of Sarsour and American activism, it's important to say that brothers and sisters, Islam is neither right or left. Exactly. It is uh, the middle path, right? You mm -hmm. will find commonalities in the left and socialism, you'll find commonalities in the right when it comes to family, traditional values, law and order. Yeah. There you'll find it with economy, fiscal policies, etc, etc. Yes. But the point here is, when we've looked at successive governments in the West, in the West, namely the UK and the US, right? Mm. Both the left and the right have killed Islam, have killed Muslims yes. and maligned Islam. Yes. Obama had the most drone strikes, right? Exactly. During his tenure as president than and any Donald Trump. Than, than Donald Trump. Yeah. Obama was the one that introduced the travel ban. Trump only added two or three more countries. countries. How to many it. did you know? How yeah. many of you guys knew that? that? Tony Blair <laughs> was centre left. This man was a socialist, right? China is a communist country. Russia is a uh, a follower. Of no, I wouldn't say Tony Blair was a socialist. No, 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 no. But the point I'm trying to make is we should get this out of this caricaturing that the right are our yeah. enemies and the left are our allies. Mm. But I appreciate that there is a growing trend of yeah. Muslim academics who are doing decolonial studies, who are doing uh, sociology and all various other studies in universities. And what they have said to me is that Muslim academics and activists find the left as a safe space mm. to articulate our grievances. Yeah. We don't find that space in the right. We find this space within the left because since they're already criticizing colonialism within a particular restrictive framework, I must add as well, it's not an adulterated critique of European colonialism, right? But there's a space there where Muslims can criticize counter-extremism laws, foreign policy, Islamophobia, etc, etc. And I think that is why there is a natural gravitation towards but the, the left. The problem is, as, as Ali's just kind of alluded to right now, when you get sucked into this and then they say to you, well, OK, we'll, we'll be your friend so on, uh, and so on. But then you have to kind of inherit our ideologies. Exactly. Right? So you, but now you have to believe in what we believe in when it comes to gay marriage, when it comes to homosexual behavior, when it comes to Absolutely. whatever it abortion, is, right? abortion and so on and so forth. And all of these things are completely against Islam. Mm. Uh, when it comes to Linda Sassour herself, to be honest with you, I was, I was looking at some of the videos that she's put up online. Mm. Okay. And um, what I've noticed is actually she's quite a prov provocateur. Like I've, I've seen her speaking to, uh, you know, with, with strong left-wing yep. uh, rhetoric. And I think this actually causes a backlash in the sense that there's some people on the centre-right, maybe not exactly far-right, that would come back and probably say something like, well, why... So you, we hate you for two reasons now. You're a Muslim and you're left-wing. Mm. <laughs> and you're giving people additional reasons to hate you, mm. right? Well, you don't need to inherit these belief systems. Mm. I, I think the beautiful thing about Islam is like once you, like you've just said, it's, it's all inclusive and it's, it's not left or right. Mm. And so going and allying with the left and inheriting these things is, is going to cause problems. I think, I think um, Sassou is going to be watching this and I just, uh, we need to formulate certain questions to ask her. And I think that she owes it to the Muslim community at this stage to answer these questions. And the first question is, do you believe it's morally accept homosexual behavior? Anything from um, kiss on the cheek to full, fully fledged penetrative sex between man and man, for example. Do you believe that this is morally acceptable? That's A. B, do you believe abortion is morally acceptable after four months? Like, let's say a six month old uh, child in the mother's womb. Do you think that's morally acceptable? Number three, do you believe that a woman a Muslim woman can marry a, for example, Christian and atheist man. Do you think that's a morally acceptable position? Do you believe that that is morally acceptable? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. These questions are all yes or no questions. We, we want to know so that we can position you or so we can make a judgment upon you as a public person um, in the Muslim community. Because the truth of the matter is, and Dili, we should mention this as well, is that she was rejected by the Democratic Party, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so by the Biden campaign, just uh, I believe it was last month. They literally dropped at the drop of a hat. Literally, that she was she was at a um, Biden campaign uh, event, I believe, and uh, some journalists noticed her. And as soon as they raised concerns with the election campaign team of Biden, they literally dropped her and distanced herself, distanced themselves from uh, Linda Sarsour, like what unequivocally. She, what was she doing there? No, she. I think she was there just delivering a. Um, a speech to to kind of uh, rally and, and organize Arab Muslim voters uh, for the Biden campaign because obviously we've got elections coming up next month. And as soon as they identified Linda, who is generally known as um, you know uh, progressive, progressive. But what, what's what's Saunders' name? What's the guy's name? I forgot the guy's Bernie, name. Bernie, Bernie Saunders. Yeah, um, she's generally known as that kind of 
left of the Democrat Party, whereas Biden is like centre left. This guy is mm. also neoliberal. You know, you know mm. what I mean? So as soon as they clocked Linda Sarsour, they dropped her because you know, we, 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 you know, she has nothing to do with this campaign. This is all to do with her position on Philistine and this stuff is like this. This humiliation. B- huge humiliation. And this mm. reminds me of hadith. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a beautiful hadith for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you do something. For the pleasure of the people, yep. and that that causes the displeasure of Allah, then Allah will basically leave you to the people. In other words, neither Allah will the be people will be happy with you, neither, neither will Allah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and and this is the reality of the situation. The truth is, when you're when you're grounded in Islamic principles, mm. right? As I'm sure you've both kind of experienced with your respective activisms, when you're grounded with Islamic principles, well, no matter what happens, you know that actually this is the theological position that makes most sense in my religion. So whatever happens to me, mm. I'm sticking by what I know is true. Exactly. You know, you know, you asked some question to her sister Linda, yeah? Yeah. The question before she answers, I think she needs then there has to be a point of reflection. She needs to say, okay, instead of some people when you ask a question, you're like, okay, I need to answer this. Before I answer that, are you answering it from yourself or from the Quran and Sunnah? It's very important. Because if it's coming from you, sister, this is something this is the deen of Allah. So if you're going to answer these questions of abortion, LGBTQT, and all the other things, and you're coming from your perspective and you, you think what you think is right, this is very problematic, Aki. Because if there's no basis, like if she says that, she said it with the interview with uh, Mahdi Hassan, she's not a scholar. So how could you make statements, Aki, where it's the deen of Allah in such magnitude with confidence? Well, I would say before her answering this question, she really needs to ponder upon if this is coming from an area of knowledge, and if it's not, one needs to be really careful to what they're saying. And really, I do think, once again, to press this point, that those three questions in particular, where the guidelines in Islam are absolutely categorical, we do need, as a Muslim community, yeah, because you're a public figure, and I'm sure many people, your constituents in the US, your fans or your friends or whoever you want to call them, we need an answer to these three questions. To repeat one more time, the three questions are, do you believe that same-sex behavior, homosexual behavior is morally acceptable? Whether a Muslim is doing it or a non-Muslim is doing it, anybody is doing it. Is homosexual behavior, according to your worldview, is that morally acceptable? Number two, do you believe abortion in all circumstances is morally acceptable? Do you believe that? Do you believe that abortion, maybe a five month, old child or a six month old child do you think that that is a morally acceptable stance number three what was the third one uh, uh, muslim women marrying yes. muslim woman marrying uh, let's say an atheist or a christian do you believe that's acceptable and is that morally okay in your on your worldview is this okay yes or no and we need to know the answers because the truth is this woman comes on t- television programs she comes on different uh, interviews and she says my people referencing the muslims mm. muslims if you survey them almost anywhere in the world with these three questions, the vast majority of Muslims will answer in a very specific way to these three questions Absolutely. anywhere in the world. If you wanna, if you wanna represent the Muslim interest, you have to speak the Muslim language. Yeah. So, so Linda, so, so another thing is, um, you're welcome to come to the podcast, the MH podcast. Yeah, and we can have a face-to-face discussion, obviously on Zoom or whatever. That's very interesting. And we can we can have a discussion on these matters. Yeah. You're very much invited to this. And I believe that people all over the Western world, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, yeah. would like to hear you really answer these questions. Because at the end of the day, people are accusing you of being, or speaking a forked tongue, which, which is the point. Talking about this. Shah, can I quickly just say something? Yes. I'll, I'll keep it very short. Please. Because someone will say, well, look, you know, she's not here to defend herself. And I, and I need to just play that little part, just so we're not sinful for this. No, no, yeah? no, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no sin here. Yeah, yeah, so look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Look, look, no one's taken away Linda's great work in, in, the, in the field of activism for Islamophobia, counter-extremism laws, Palestine, etc. No one's taken this away from you. We appreciate and acknowledge those good things that you've done and you've got a long track record. But we want to reiterate to the listeners, the viewers mm-hmm. and yourself that these things are not a criteria for Islamic activism. These things are not a furqan, mm. they're, not, they're not a source or a basis exactly. for, for how we go about enjoying good and forbidding evil. Right? Exactly. So these are good things in and of themselves, mm. but once you start dabbling and dipping your feet, in your mm. case, putting, the, putting yourself t- entirely in it, in mm. propagating these positions which are unequivocally haram and kufri, mm-hmm. then you will be called out. Exactly. And, and I think Abdullah bin Masood, may, uh, radiallahu anh, may Allah have mercy on him, mm. is that he said, 
um, that how many people intended good, but they never got the chance to achieve it. Sure. So we're not we're not saying your intention. We're not coming and saying you're an infiltrator. What we're saying is your intention might be good, and this goes to our next topic of the whole um, uh, Star Omar Suleiman's issue, mm. because once again, look, and I'll, I'll dive straight into it. Yeah, is that any Muslim? That does a certain act, whoever beat me. I never Which ever. Issue are we talking we're about? talking about the issue of the whole, you know. Justin, there's many. Yeah. Okay, all right. No, no, I'm not. The, 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 the whole issue of, you know, Brother Daniel Hakachu, what was brought up, the, the, the whole things the of the ritual, all of that, that, yeah. I want to make, like, from the get, I just want to make something very clear, yeah. Anytime I see any of that behavior from any Muslim, I personally do not think this person is intentionally committing a kufr. I believe the intentions are there, but in an action, an action for, to be accepted, as we know from the Quran and Sunnah, is that I can't say my intentions are good. Let me go to a nightclub and speak to some girls and give them dawah. Yeah, maybe I might receive dawah. Have you yeah? done that? Uh, why do you have to ask a personal question? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you remember? No, <laughs> the thing is, intentions are good, but if your actions are not according to the Quran and Sunnah, brother, is it going to be accepted? So the yeah. question is, let's no, get... Yeah, yeah I, I think this is a good point to, to, to raise. Actually, I, I'm not really interested in that particular case study in a vacuum. I'm interested in it in conjunction with our ma major question, which is mm. activism mm. in the UK and the US. Because I think the bigger question here is when um, Dr. Amr Suleiman, of course, who we love and respect, who, who's a Muslim and who we think good things of, we don't, we, we're not trying to cancel anybody, right? Same with Brother Daniel Hakkachu. I'll be honest, Wallahi, there are, there are no, two no. believers yeah. that we see we, as a Muslim not, we, brother. We love. Yes. All the believers And the Quran instructs us This is very important guys You know The Quran instructs us to say uh, To be humble with the believers mm. You know And lower your wing to the believers yeah. mm. Yeah, exactly. Not and like the, the S-pubs Yeah so the, No so, we have to be so, real yeah. Yeah, it's it's not, just taken out but, no, but, it's but, real. I'm but not early in hijab in some time. I forgot how people just get taken out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> One yeah. time. Yeah, but yeah, having, yeah. Having, One said, time. having said that. Not look. a long thing. It's a chung thing. <laughs> look, yeah. let's, let's talk about this. Because yeah. with, with this, in the UK, we said that we've, we've had quite, let's say, a, confronta a confrontational approach sometimes with the, the case study that you brought up with the Birmingham mm -hmm. incident, which you said has had traction and w was instigating national conversations. This situation here was clearly... The, the 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 migrant protest was is being spearheaded by um, left wing no. parties, of which obviously the LGBT community came came forward. Christian community, um, I think some Jews were there. Yeah, faith groups that are left leaning. So yeah, it's the Jews and Christians and others that are generally left leaning. Left leaning. Politics, yeah. So they all kind of together, and there were some really like horrible things that we had to okay. witness. First, first of them was the anointments, yeah. because this was clear. In my appointment, uh, in my understanding, uh, disbelief. Okay, so the, the the sister, what was her name? I think it's Sister Sarah um, Bilu. So, so she is someone. She is not yeah, just a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this person who was literally being, she had a cross being anointed on her head. Something of that nature. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, I have to be educated here. As far as I know, I saw a LGBTQ, whatever you want to call it, with a rainbow thing. Doing a cross in the oh, uh, I don't know the exact words. I don't know. Do yeah, you know? it was a right man. Uh, it was a cross. But, but was it, yeah. Did the cross happen? With yes, the yes, yes, yes. Bro, to me, that was the like mind. Blowing. Was it just? But well, hold on. Was it just her? Or was it someone else? Uh, no, there was then another Z guy from the. Zara Bellu was there. Another brother was there, and it's also important. What's his name? I forgot the brother's yeah. name. He was the head of care, wasn't he? Yeah, um, sure, I but, think but, so. But, but in, so. in attendance, yes, yes. So there was care, yeah. and she was. I believe she was Ikna. But please. She was either Ikna or Ker, Zara Bilna, she's very prominent. We also need to mention that Imam Zai Shakir from Zaytuna was present in this. He was project. present, but he wasn't doing no, this. No, of course, no, of course, no. Right, it's, it's important to differentiate between who was present and who was doing it. But right? it's also important to understand... In the with, this, with this particular... Yeah, that if we've got people of knowledge there that are not making inkar and, and, and not forbidding this evil, Whilst it's happening in front of them, what's what's a greater activism than the activism against shirk? Wallahi, I gave a speak, I gave a lecture at UCL last year. Mm. It was entitled "What is the Ideal Muslim Activist?" And what we start is the okay, before we start thinking of um, the rights of the people, it's the rights of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Exactly. That is the basis of our activism, and from that emanates everything. Else. No, but you know, here's the point, guys. Look, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I have to be. I've spoken to Yasser Qadi about this before, and I had a whole kind of podcast with him. I, yeah, we know about that. Uh, no, no, the first one, not the second one, oh. right? I had two uh, podcasts. Yeah, we know about that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah. But with that, we had this discussion, right? Yeah. And it's an important discussion. And we're trying to just kind of find best practice here for yes. the Muslims. Because not only are these kinds of protests, which are spearheaded by these LGBT groups or left-leaning groups, or whatever you want to call them, 
um, spearheaded by them and then Muslims are expected to come and kind of tag along, not only are they problematic from an allegiance perspective, but they're problematic practically. I mean, look at what's happening. If someone as someone as religious, someone as knowledgeable as Amr Suleiman was pressured, let's be honest, he was pressured enough not to kind of do inkar, as you've mentioned, not to negate this, not to make a speech against this, which, quite frankly, if this guy would have gone to Speaker's Corner, right, and d d done this to Muslim people, he, this, this person would have been laughed out of the park. Oh. So what I'm saying is, if someone like him can be kind of pressured to do things like this, yeah, which are things, quite frankly, which are quite frightening, yeah, mm. then imagine allowing a lay audience, young people, 15, 16, 17, mm. to go to these environments where the lines are, comp the theological lines are completely blurred. My question is, on what basis is the trade-off of a young Muslim person being in that environment in any way better than Right, yeah. the benefit that you can achieve from the activism that's being done. I think blood is an understatement. Non-existent would be more apt. Right, mm. uh, you know, is again, it is not uncommon that you find uh, left-leaning uh, progressive groups leading on these issues, and you'll find that Muslims generally have little to no say in terms of the terms of engagement here. Mm. And this is something, again, it's a discussion that's taking place in the UK, it's a discussion that's taking place in parts of Europe. But I think what's happened in the US is that they've taken it to a different level. They've taken yeah? it to a very different they've level. They've taken it to a different level here. Look, at the end of the day, as, as Muslims in the UK, brothers, we don't hide that we have 16 to 17 practically more or less useless MPs when it comes to advocating or pushing for Muslim rights. Right. Yeah, We know this. We know we have a mayor in London who, like Ilhan Omar, will dance and hold hands and, and get jiggy with it with LGBT people. We know this. But the point we're trying to make across here but, is, no, is, is the religious valid, validation yes. or silence from people of knowledge. That's right. That's Mayor right. Sadiq Khan did, not, did what he do with the support of ulama and imams and institutes, right. whether indirectly or directly. And this is what we're essentially addressing here. Right. You know, look, can, look I want to come here from an angle here. Yeah? Like, you right. know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Ben Israel when he told them not to fish in the Sabbath. You seem like you're going to cry. What's going on here? <laughs> 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 My voice went down a bit. No, no. The, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Israel and they told him not to fish in the Sabbath. Yeah? And there was three groups. The first group was the ones who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. The second group was the ones who didn't and they were acting a bit, you know, like, you know, clever thinking, mm. yeah. We've, um, and the third group was the ones who were silent. Yeah? The scholars say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the ones who didn't obey and the ones who were silent. Yeah? So it's, it's very important for us to understand that when you're silent, you're a part of that, yeah? But I want to make some... I just want to come from a different angle. Because me, like, I'll be honest, I like to give the benefit of doubt to a believer. Do you get it? So to a believer... No, 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 we have to. Look, you know why? Look, and these are the dangers. Like, for example, we're talking about our MP, our, um, the mayor here, mm -hmm. Ilhan Omar. Whenever you get into these circles, you need to understand, yeah? Is... And we've been in certain similar yeah. situations with the Shia. They the invited words, us in and so on. Yes, exactly. It was very awkward in the context of... We went there because an injustice happened. Yeah. The person that's running over these... Uh, Shia brothers and sisters He didn't say Okay is this a Shia Is this a, a mm. Salafi He didn't So the thing is It's like uh, In these situations It's very hard Because you know when You're, you're trying to do something For the sake of Allah And mm. you're joining hands together And they're praising you And saying you know Thank you for coming man mm. da -da -da, Etc What happens is You end up Trying to please them Unintentionally mm. You feel awkward So for example When I saw I'm going to call Ustad Because I believe he's Hmm. Maybe all the Umar Suleiman, yeah. yeah we'll call him I've, 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 I, I call him Ustad. I respect. Yeah, I just, I just want to say that. So the thing is, no problem. So the thing is, Ustad is a title. That's, Ustad is a title that's being used quite really nearly. Okay, people. I, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so the thing is, so the thing is here is just um, when he was, for example, kind of two females, females came and like, yeah, yeah. look. At and the end of the day, enough. there's two extremes, yeah. Like I believe no, that. That's uh, different. I, 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 mean, I wouldn't. No, yeah, no, 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 no. But, but I'm trying to make a point here. So yeah. I'm not saying this is the issue. What I'm trying to say is, you can see that he is in an awkward position and he doesn't want to yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah, and you course. can see that by him leaving and going. So sometimes we have to give benefit of doubt. And it's important to realize that he actually kind of re repented as well. No, exactly. So this is where I'm saying I'm. He, I, he had a whole statement. Exactly. He made a repentance. Yeah. yeah. Now I respect Daniel, brother Daniel Hakikachu, yeah. Like I don't agree with like, certain stuff uh, uh, Ustad Umar Sirman does and Daniel Hakikachu. But the point is sometimes it's like in that situation he clearly said I didn't know this libation or libation or whatever you want to call it, yeah. <laughs> it it whatever what he goes <laughs> the, it, the woman was saying it's consecrated. <laughs> no, no, okay, 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 okay. Look, this look, look, this look, 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 look. <laughs> Look, like I said before, yeah, no, I, of I, course, of course. I, 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 maybe he didn't hear it. 
No, he might not. Have no, no, no. I'm sorry. I have to assume the best in the context. If somebody's saying he didn't know, and for me to be like, oh, that's not good enough. Your repentance wasn't good enough, etc. No, no, of course. No, no, no. He just what? said that what? the lady said it was consecrated water, but he probably didn't hear. No, he, he, might he might not have heard. He might not. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, because if somebody's saying he's a believer, okay, yeah? no, no, he, and also like they're just throwing it on the floor. I don't exactly, know. Exactly. Exactly. Kind of explain it. Exactly. Exactly. So I the, have known the thing that is, either. to me, where the red line was drawn, and once again, it comes back to that. Well, like it's, and this goes across board. Yeah, um, it's it's. The, pleasing the people at the cost of Allah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And you see this over and over again mm. You know, we do not understand the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wallahi, how could you go in front of a priest And he's doing a cross on your head mm. Wallahi, no, 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 Wallahi I, I think to myself, if there was yeah, any line that was crossed repent, Aki wallahi. Because if okay. Omar Suleiman is saying that he didn't know He's publicly repenting We can see that he's moving away Yeah the, We need to make it And say you know what He's not comfortable He probably regrets it One thing I will criticize And say maybe you should have Made this pers- uh, pro- uh, repentance When this happened Yeah this Not not after two three years Yeah but well, I, Also but in brother Daniel's defense Initially when he raised Some concern to Some pictures People yeah. called him a liar and until the oh, footage came out, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so so, okay. so he released some photos first, and yeah. you know many people called him a liar, and you know, and mm. and, and and then the footage got released, and then okay. it, then it was just like, oh, okay, well, okay, well, well, I see. Now, now, <laughs> now brother Danny Hackett, look, he has a right. You know why? I'll be honest. If I was in America and I saw this, wallahi, you know, I see a got backbone. Wallahi, it's sad. Wallahi, you look at all these duad, and wallahi, where is your backbone? Okay, we've been in certain situations. Women want to shake our hands. We could have easily say, you know what? Yeah, let's do no, it. So, shaking the hands is no, 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 I know, I know, but we're saying, yeah, but Aki, yeah, we're saying yeah. we don't Cross even do. Why is it that when it comes to even shaking hands, Aki, we're like, uh, uh-uh. uh, we're not even going there, yeah? Why? Because we know it's not going to stop there. My hand, give me a hug. Okay, hug. After hug, God knows what else you're going to flip and tell me to do. The thing is this: then where do we draw the line? So we say prevention is better than cure, and they are never going to be happy with you. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said this in the Quran, and we know for the Hadith that. If you compromise this much, they're going to want more and more and more. And this is what I think I would, as a nobody, convey this to the American Duat out there, that if you compromise, wallahi, it's not, they're just going to ask, ask for more and more and more. And look at the degree that, you, and wallahi, this is so disturbing. Like imagine the rights of Allah, yeah, shirk, and somebody there and you feel bad because a priest is there and saying, come your turn to do the cross. And you're thinking, oh, I don't want to, I don't, I, don't, I don't, no, no, one second. Uh, I don't want to be rude. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Who the hell are you, man? I don't want to be rude. I would say, get lost. No, wallahi. No, no, no. SubhanAllah, wallahi. We're laughing, but it's, it's a reality. No, but no. The I mean, point well, I want to bring the, the thumber up, the fruit that comes from all of this is not to try and point the finger at um, um, Dr. Amr Suleiman. I'm not trying to point the finger at him and say, that that's not, this is un, it's fruitless for me to do that. That's what, he's already been held to account and he's already come to with his repentance, whatever. Yeah. For me, it's to show the futility and the weakness and the unsuccessful nature of this approach. This approach of pandering to the left wing, going to their protest, spearheaded by them, it just, yani, the Prophet said, Al Mar'u ala Deen Khalilihi, the man is in the religion of his friend. Exactly. When you allow Muslim youth to attend places like this, right, where there's potential for shirk and kufr and Free mixing and, and, and for them to actually do riddah mm. by, by believing in you know all those things that we talked about homosexuality etc. What you're doing is you're dis- you're, you're actually there's an opportunity cost here. Yeah. The opportunity of cost of activism for Muslims versus dawah for Islam. Yeah, yes. and I'm, unfortunately you've chosen the activism over mm-hmm. dawah, and, and what, that's my concern. My concern is not the individual person. The individual person, him and Allah subhanahu wa taala, he's going to be just like all of us judge on the day of judgment. We're not talking about the individual person, we're talking about the strategy that's employed. I genuinely, totally believe that it's a failed strategy. It is a failed strategy. Compare it with the UK strategy, it's a completely failed strategy. There's the UK strategy of Muslim, conservative, what you're gonna call them, Orthodox Muslims, whatever, mm. single issue, and they make- Their position's clear. Position's because, clear. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the UK general election, most Muslims will still generally vote Labour. But they had, there's certain red lines that the Ummah has here. Yeah. Do you understand? Exactly. The RSE was one of those issues. Yes. Circumcision was one of them issues. Halal meat was one of those issues. There's many, a, the same sex marriage bill was an issue. Those 500 ulama did not have to come out and write that statement when yeah, the bill was exactly. already going through. Exactly. It was to make clear, just to let you know, since you're pushing this bill through, this is the actual position of the yes. community. Do mm. you understand? Now, with regards to you know, our advice to, you know, 
Islamic institutes, Muslim activists, broadly speaking in the West, if you believe from the consultation of your scholars that, you know, attending these uh, protests and these kind of things is permissible and there's a, a genuine Shari'i based maslaha here, yeah? At least take some caution and precaution by telling Muslimin stay away, mm. stay segregated, don't embark on these things, you know, even tell the organizers. It's not even just like that. It's it's worse than that. You have to if just you're, if you're seeing that these things are happening, right? You 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 have to overcompensate theologically for telling them that this is kufr. Yeah. This is shit. Exactly. This is uh, if you uh, this is haram. You can't believe yeah. in this. You yeah. have to you have to yeah. overcompensate. Yeah. So, 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 so you yeah. agree? Look, do you agree that, for example? That there can be some kind of working together, but lines have to be drawn. Yeah, yeah. So you're not, you're not, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not saying, yeah. You're not, you're not saying that you shouldn't do this from the get go. We're saying the foundations you're set up and it's flawed. I, in the ideal world, I believe that Muslims should lead these. I mean, if if, if we're talking about successive civil 100%. rights movements, right, in the sixties and seventies, yeah. and, and everyone will know this from history, it was only when the blacks took their own initiative. It was only when women, let's say for the argument or the feminist movement, took their own initiative. Absolutely. It's only when people from communities have said, look, we don't have objectives. Like, we're not very clear. The way this should be is that we're coming out with very clear objectives, just like they did in, in Birmingham that time. Yeah. It was a good, it was only 200 people yeah. or 300. Yeah. Imagine what happens if we get 5,000. Imagine what happens if we get 5,000 people talking about, for example, the Uyghur. Uh, Allah says, Surah Badr, if, if there's how many of you, even though it's, it might be a bit of context, but still. Yeah, yeah. Haki, but, come on, no, let's be here. Yeah. No, the idea is this. The idea is if a single issue, yes. it's a very clear message, yes. it's non compromising of our principles. Yes. This is this is different from what this exactly. what's going on here. We, we've seen it throughout history: the women's emancipation movement in the UK, uh, the Indian independence movement, uh, the anti-apartheid movement, the Black Civil Rights movement, the Arab Spring, or at least what it began as. It was when people took ownership on their terms to change their circumstances, and not jumping onto other people's bandwagons where there would be ideological compromise. In our case, you know, clearly seeing sometimes a sometimes brings more harm. Than shirk, you understand? Yeah. Yes. Um, but sometimes it brings more harm. Of course, absolutely. You know, with certain uh, things, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it's true. We, we have to be careful with these things. But the thing is, uh, like again, and one thing I want to touch upon as well yeah, is very important because sometimes, you know, when we're making these comments and giving our opinions, yeah, personally, myself, I believe my opinion, yeah, and it, I can just give you, if it's a youngsters watching you, I'm trying to give the sign to them, yeah, because Yakin Institute, like for example, Alhamdulillah, like Sheikh Tahir White, yeah, is someone that I look up to, yeah, somebody who's there and who's trying to move the organization, inshallah, as far as I know, I'm assuming the best, to the right direction, yeah? And it's very important for us to also not jump on the bandwagon because we have some people who be like, you know, well, like, I saw one brother in the park, uh, subhanAllah, they're saying, um, you know, my teachers have got a basira from Allah. Um, and uh, Yeah, the, you know, the teachers, yeah? The unqualified teachers, yeah? And, 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 and what is the thing? He goes, yeah, they knew about Yasa Qadi and they knew about uh, this guy and that guy. It's like me doing tabdi on 40 people and two of them become a real tabdi and I go, Allah gave me basira. What are you talking about? And we're not making tabdi. No, 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 exactly. No, no, well, no, but the, the point here is this, yeah. We need to know all this because some people come and say, yeah, I knew, see, um, I knew it. I warned about this five years ago. Okay, what are you talking about? Yeah, we need to be careful because otherwise what happens is we embarrass ourselves because we don't have the knowledge and there are people of knowledge on board like Sheikh Tahir White, uh, which is a person of knowledge who's dedicated his life to knowledge, alhamdulillah, who's on board. So with this aspect, the only thing that I want to touch upon is that because I don't want to go into Yakin Institute as an organization, etc. Because if there's a person of knowledge there, I'm a nobody to talk in that context. You get what I'm trying to say? And I want to give that due right because as youngsters, sometimes we cross our limits and be like, oh no, this is wrong. Why are you not talking about this, etc. Mm. And what will happen is it backfires and makes us look embarrassing because what happened, the smear campaign that happened against Sheikh Haytham, um, and uh, funnily enough, and uh, from like you know, brother Imran, I'll be very sure, and I love him for the sake of Allah, but this was an issue that was done in public and needs to be addressed in public. When mm. Sheikh, mm -hmm. brother Imran, come on, man, please. <laughs> no, no, yeah? no, people won't know who you're talking about. They know who I'm talking about, yeah? Trust me, they know who I'm talking about, yeah? Um, <laughs> you mean Imran Hussain from the Aira? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imran Khan, the singer? No, oh, exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, what happened is, Sheikh, 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 no, 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 no. Look, he knows, I speak to him, alhamdulillah, and I'm going to see him in two weeks' time as well, inshallah. Our difference are in the public domain. But the issue is this, Sheikh Haytham was thrown under the bus. He was, smear campaign happened, yeah? And guess what? Sheikh Tahir White was used to... Um, Justify. Justify in the context of this is a real scholar. He was praised in such a level that this video was taken down now. Why? Because now uh, Sheikh Tahir White, may Allah bless him, inshallah, is with Yakin Institute. So sometimes speaking without knowledge, it backfires. So there's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon, and yeah, you just say we that, knew he, he, we, was, he was on the right path, and then he moved uh, there. He became not on the right path who, after that. <clears throat> uh, this, is, this is the argument that could be made. Who was on the right path? 
by their wife. They, 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 they no, 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 but this is not this the argument that's being made. And we're saying you can't make that. Like, nobody should jump on the bandwagon and be like, you know, like, I knew it. I knew this was coming, etc. Please, if you don't, if let's know our lane. Let's stick to I'm, I'm on the hard shoulder And people should stick to their lane And not come out with I knew See I told I warned you guys Etc This is I've, No but I yeah. think there's a point Of refutation here Which is If if you are willing to do The refutation I, I, You know he, they, Anyone can reserve the right To say well this person's Changed their views Therefore I've changed mine About mm-hmm. them right but the point of refutation, what you've done, but, the refutation about Hitler yeah. had that, so why not do one about him as well? Well, well, well that's yeah. and, and then where, will it, where will it end, Look, right? I, I feel that we are slightly digressing. Yeah, yeah. we did. But, 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 yeah. but let's just pull it back, yeah? Yes. Not as tempting as it is, I love digressions, yeah? Yes. Look, we get that Siasa is a huge grey area. So Siasa and, and, and generally the politics and the affairs of, of people is a huge grey area. And we get, especially in the last 80 to 100 years, with historical and monumental changes in the Muslim world and huge communities in the West, that this issue of Muslim minority survival in non-Muslim lands is a new reality. Mm. And we get that there are many scopes, many justifications, many uh, maxims which can be applied in terms of our engagement in our activism. But I guess what we're trying to address in this podcast is red lines. Yeah. That's right. And not only red and, lines, and, and, but, but, like, but, but what enables yeah. what enables from a theological point of view, where is ulama institutes enabling for those red lines to either be blurred or distorted or even become non-existent. Mm-hmm. So there is a level of accountability when we have individuals like Linda Sarsour uh, in the US or others in the UK, but most of the prominent ones are in the US that they have been praised by scholars, they have been hosted by Islamic institutions, they have been. So, 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 so these are these are huge trends because at the end of the day, if you are going to present the likes of Linda Sassour and Ilhan Omar and Rashid Tlaib or Salma Yaqub here or Mayor Sadiq Khan as your exo- as your role models for your children, know that when they grow up, yeah. that they can adopt these positions and mm. say, "Well, you praised them when we mm-hmm. were young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You made us see their posters and their videos and yeah. their lectures and their talks when we were yeah. young. Yeah. So we too now adopt these things. Do you understand? So it's it's a very dangerous thing that needs to be nipped in the bud right now mm. because. Dangerous things are ahead for our youth. I, th- I think what it is is that we're talking about balances, right? Mm. On one side of the spectrum, you have people who yeah. blurring the lines or getting rid of them, mm. and on the other side of the, and this is we're realizing the untenable nature of this. How uh, how much of a failure this is actually, and how much of an embarrassment it becomes. Um, we saw this, by the way, in Egypt uh, with the Salafi movement, oh, and yeah, the, yeah, and and how. By the way, this is brotherly advice. Like honestly, if you look at history. Or the recent history, right, with with political Dawah movements that became political, and then they engaged in activism. They got on the wrong side of the political spe- spectrum, and then basically their Dawah became uh, null, of, almost zero. The Egyptian example was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but no, they- but, but this example here of of of, of a group. I'm not trying to m- mention the politics here, but what I am talking about is the Dawah aspect. Yes, the, the Dawah fizzled away. The, the, you know, the, those people. Just look at, ju- just do a Google trend search on Amr Khalid. Mm. Amr Khaled is probably the most he was actually one of the most searched people in on the internet in the Arabic world mm, mm. in Egypt from I think 2008 to okay. a certain time period right and right after the, um, uh, the, the the protests and riots in Egypt took place and he took a certain position oh um, he's nowhere to be seen now mm. and the same thing applies with the Salafi movement uh, in Egypt that sometimes when you take certain political decisions it destroys your dawah. No. And what I worry about with the American du'at, I'll be completely honest, yeah. is that they, they might actually fall into, learn from the lessons of recent history. Mm. They may be like that as well. Yeah. Because where you do something which is, to the lay audiences, so clearly mm. selling out, quite frankly, right? I'm not saying they're doing that. But if you go in that direction... But if it seems like that, eventually the reality is going to happen. What's going to happen is, yeah. if people are going to say, well, to be honest, we were following you because you mm. followed Islam. Yes. Now we can see even mm. that you're not following Islam, therefore we're not going to follow you anymore. Mm. And it's as simple as that. Your dawah will become completely bankrupt. It will break from, from within. It will be it will th- a thing of the past, just like the Egyptian example. On the other side, though, you have these other groups of ultra-conservative people from another, the another, another extreme. And they're realizing their vision is not working either, quite frankly. Well, like, well, that's so true. So, there's, dis- there's a disconnect between that so, and the reality. This is this ain't working, yeah. and that ain't working either. Because, hold on, you were you were making refutations of people. You were making refutations of people. Yeah, 
And now you've got, you're making refutations of them because of their stances of speaking against the, the rulers. But now you're hosting them on your program. Mm. I'm, I'm really sorry, this is hypocrisy. <laughs> no, yeah. this is what, sal- sal- and, and, now, and now, no, you were labeling them Ikhwani before. Now you, you've got them sitting next to you speaking to them because an enemy of the enemy is my friend. So no, it's maslaha. Yeah. So you're using maslaha. But wait a minute, you never used maslaha before. Mm. So uh, why is why is maslaha now in part of your uh, uh, your jurisprudential tools? Mm. You would never be seated with the, seated with this individual if you didn't have a common enemy. Look, I'll, so the the point is that's not working and that's not going to work. There's something in the middle, and that's where you need to have a robust exactly. understanding of Islam, not just the ahkam but the usul. When you have the understanding of the ahkam, then you don't fall into al maslaha muqaddama ala nas. Or oh, this Tufi, there's a guy called um, Najmuddin al Tufi, yeah, yeah. who's a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah, yeah, yeah. who, who said that al Maslaha is muqaddam al nas. It comes before the text. Yeah. And and this was refuted by almost. I've, I've written something on this, That's by the way, it's on my website. I've, I've written a, an essay on this. It, it was also something which was marked in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Yeah, bro, you're becoming like Hamza. Hamza does his. Oh, so I'm studying philosophy at the moment. And I'm doing the But the idea of al Maslaha muqaddam al nas. No, hold on. the degrees and. No, 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 I'm just saying because I've got a degree. I, I've got something people can read. I'm gonna I, send a blue I've got a degree, tw- thirty-two temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send a, I'm gonna uh, send so a blue Peter badge. Yeah, yeah, right. That's on one side. Sorry, that's what you're doing mm. because the Nas says you're not allowed to do to to support certain things, and you're supporting it. That's mm. Maslaha Muqaddam al Nas. You're using a Tawfi's notion, right? Mm. Oh, that's what it is. And on the other side, you have these people who are saying, well. Maslaha Mursala doesn't maybe not even exist. Maybe they don't even know how to conceptualize Maslaha Mursala. Mm-hmm. So, but but the truth is there is such a thing as Maslaha, that, and they have this weird understanding of Tabdiya, and that, that that blocks would, everything for them. Would, it stops them from being able to cooperate with anybody. Absolutely. Right? So these people here and, both, and the technology. What, 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 what do they have in common? So, so, so let me just lack of knowledge. Uh, uh, no, 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 not lack of knowledge. No, I'm not going to put it like let that. Let me add something. Because to this. Uh, what would you, you can it? have a lot of knowledge. No. Let me tell you something. Okay, right. A scholar can ha- can be ignorant. Mm. And this is called a jahl murakkab, mm. compounded ignorance. Because when you actually think you're right, you think you're right, but you're wrong because you've made the wrong kind of judgment. So Look, the idea is don't go into this side and mm. don't go into this side. We're saying there's a middle path. And the middle path is, I have to answer my mom's phone. One second. Is my answering your mother's phone. I'm so sorry because it's recorded too many times. Oh, that's fine. Maybe this is okay, brothers and sisters. If your mom calls, answer. If any man, share them, send us on our video. video, send us on our video. Uh, There's a point. I'm one. Sorry, uh, yeah, carry on. I'm so, so sorry. So, so let me just. Uh, she was okay. calling. So so this know. side ain't working. Yeah. Because this side, you're, you're embarrassing yourself. You're gonna embarrass yourself, praising someone like Lin Sasur because you don't want to confront her because she's a bit too forceful for you. Dispositionally, I think that she's forceful on them. They don't want to confront her. But on the other side, that's the American dies. They need to start. Challenging. Yeah, but yeah, this there's one thing I must add, Habib. There's, there's not that many no, doing. No, let me tell you, but on the other side. On the other side, you have these people that are challenging everybody, yeah. and, and 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 they're not, not making friends of anyone. Yeah. We're seeing there's a middle path, which is don't fall into which is the Quran. You don't do any, yani uh, uh, munkar. Yeah. But at the same time, no, no, no. We're not we're not trying to cancel people. Yeah. We're just trying to advise them as our loving brothers that we want the best for them. It's also important to add because obviously you guys specifically yeah, highlighted awesome. those from the Salafi persuasion. But let's not let's not get twisted, my dear brothers. Yeah, mm. there are also those who come from an Ash'ari, Maturidi, Tasawwufi background mm. that use this guise of um, obeying rulers, not adopting, uh, you know, leftist um, uh, ideology. That they hide behind this garb of traditionalism while supporting, backing, and bootlicking tyrants. Yeah, so we are again reiterating that neither of the camps is an ideal thing to be you know subscribing to do you understand because i know right now it's a very polarized uh, arena especially online it's either uh, you know the kind of left leaning progressive woke imams etc etc who produce or is assume that they produce the likes of linda sarsour and on the other spectrum you or have they enable it. or they enable it yeah or on the other side you have the traditionalists and they could be sufi or salafi but they too also have some issues there as well and it's more apparent in the Muslim world but we see elements of it here in terms of accepting certain laws accepting certain oppressive laws towards Muslims and people of colour in the West what we're saying here is there needs to be a balance and there needs to be a middle ground exactly. I don't think any three of us here and, and many people that will be watching that we subscribe to either yeah. we're saying that there are v- there is validity in both mm. and there is clear problems in both. Mm. But today, obviously, we're addressing the the, the Sarsour yes. issue and 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 that and the Mexican immigration uh, protest because the the rotten fruits were undeniably apparent in those mm. instances. Mm. 
Yeah, I think it was a productive podcast, man. <laughs> we're coming from a place where we want to say to people that we're all brothers, but because we love you, whoever you may be that's watching this podcast, because we love you as brothers and sisters, we thought it'd be productive to have this discussion with you, not with the intent of trying to harm you or to detract, detract from your personal, from your personality or from your status, but actually to bring you closer to maybe a, a aqrab. Like the Quran says, you know, Aqrab min hadha rushuda. Yeah, sorry, Aqrab min hadha rushuda. Was it? Can I start that again? Yeah. So, this podcast was not intended to try and harm anybody or to try and do tafsir or tabdiya or takfir or to cancel anybody, but instead it was just productive advice and discussions about strategies. And quite frankly, uh, these strategies that are being employed in terms of activism need to be revised. It's good that we've tried certain things. But we know now, I think quite clearly, what does not work, it doesn't work to be completely quietist and not cooperative, and it does not work either. to be Because those individuals who are quietists are now cooperating, right? Yeah. Uh, and we're seeing the untenability of that position. And on the other side, it doesn't make sense to be uh, completely blurring of the lines and let's make allegiances with anyone and all those things because we're seeing... As you've mentioned, the rotten fruits of that as well. And the, and, the, and the truth, I think, is somewhere in the middle, even though that's usually a fallacy. But I think in this case, it's reality. But until next time... Wait, what, what, so, Pan, cut this guy. Maybe he wants his last word. Oh, you want to have a last word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm just going to conclude on the statement, the very well-known statement of Umar yeah. al-Khattab, where he said, you know, we were the most humiliated people and Allah honored us through Islam. You know, if we seek honor other than Islam, we'll be humiliated again. Wallahi, this doesn't, this encapsulates the entire issue here. You, we as an Ummah, whether in the West or in the Muslim world, as a community, you know, micro, macro, whatever you want to talk it, the more we water down and compromise the deen of Islam, you need the clear issues. Yes. The clear issues, not the great issues, yeah, the clear yeah, yeah. issues. Once we start compromising on this, there's going to be nothing left for us in this life or the hereafter. And this is a very, very scary afterthought, which we hope that listeners and viewers <laughs> take us in. Exactly. And like, I was going to say the same thing as well. And well, like, that, that's what it seems. It just seems like that brother and sister in America, Duat, um, yani, with all due respect, well, like, it's just we need to grow a bit of a bit of a backbone. You know, we've had scenarios where, you know, like I said, even shaking hands, something so you can call it minor. But we refuse to even give that because we know once they take a finger, then it's going to be an arm and they're going to, they're just going to want you. So brothers and sisters, if you're watching this in America, please study your religion. Wallahi, you don't study your religion when you're hit with these things. You just all over the place. You know, wallahi, I was speaking to one guy. He goes, oh, I've got doubts. I'm an ex-Muslim. I said, Aki, we you studying philosophy. I said, how long have you been studying? Oh, three years. I said, how long have you been studying Islam? Oh, not really. Aki, how do you? I mean, if you're not going to be a murtad, who's going to be a murtad? <laughs> no, no, no. If, if you're not going to be murtad, you're not going to be murtad. You're studying three years philosophy. You don't. Hey, you it, it, you're not. You're not. Yeah, well, like, it's, it, this is really annoys me because what we see is people please, Zaki. Yeah, we see people, the, the duat in America, and they're just trying to please the people. And like you said, wallahi, success is from Allah. If you Allah. think you're going to join forces with LGBTQ2, all of them put together, wallahi, you don't think success is in your hand. And in the um, in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. Um, the battle of... Uh, Uhud? No. Well, there was about. the biggest army in uh, Surah Tawbah. Hunayn. In the battle of Hunayn, Allah I subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, this, this is amazing. The battle of Badr and the battle of Hunayn. In the battle of Badr, there were 300 and something in number against an army of 1,000. In the battle of Hunayn, and I think in the tafsir it talks about Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, said that today no army can defeat us. Yeah? And Allah says you turn back on your heels. Yeah? Brothers and sisters, you know what that shows you? It shows you success is not in numbers. Success is not how many people we know. Oh, if we come and join forces with this guy and that guy, Allah, if Allah is going to humiliate you, you're going to be humiliated in a big number. That's what's going to happen. So please have a backbone and inshallah, study your religion inshallah and success comes from Allah. Wallahi, put this and drill this in your head and look at the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, I'll, I'll emphasize on this, the thing that disturbed me most about that thing was the brothers and sisters getting a cross on their head or something along those lines. Wallahi, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm so sorry There's a priest there And I'm, I know I'm going to rant I'm so sorry Wallahi, We have to emphasize on this There's a priest there Wallahi come in saying Come you're next We're going to do a cross <laughs> Can you imagine And you're there thinking Oh you know how embarrassing it would be If I said no Who cares <laughs> Wallahi Who cares Wallahi please inshallah Learn the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And put it first inshallah um, Till next time Yes we finish off the podcast man. That's it Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum